right, kids, when anything sells fast or people buy a lot of something, we say that it's selling like hotcakes. And this could be books, video games, or Diddy's Sean John Velour tracksuits. Of course, this applies to food, but evidently not hotcakes, pancakes, flapjacks. When were they also called Johnny Cakes? Who's Johnny? Why Johnny? Some white man. Anyways, Remember when the International House of Pancakes switched from IHOP to IHOB in order to drum up business? Remember that? Did y'all get burgers at the same place you would order your Rudy Tootie Fresh and Fruity? Couldn't be me. But I know a place where all of us would buy velour flavored pancakes. Next time you and your friends can't agree where to go for lunch or dinner, you might want to try a food hall like this, where one friend, for instance, can get some Latin street food and you can get some New Orleans Cajun cooking if that's what you want. This is not some 1980s food court. Instead, it's the hot new trend in dining out. Hold up, John Matarese from WCPO Cincinnati. I don't know why the decade I was born in just caught a stray like the 80s was a long time ago, but he's right. Food halls are like mall food courts, just with independently owned restaurants as opposed to already well-known chains, but yeah, it's different cuisine under one roof. Food halls are now what food trucks were in 2010. Get some, Gen Alpha, you young weird bastards. Back then, there were just 25 food halls in the entire US, but by 2015, that number had more than doubled to over 50. By 2020, Cashman and Wakefield reported that they had tracked food halls across the US since 2016 and identified 223 open and operating food hall projects pre-COVID-19, with over 165 announced as in development. Also, Technovio recently predicted that the ready-to-eat food market will grow globally by $71 billion between 2021 and 2026. So if you've never been to a food hall or you don't have one nearby, you will. There are at least five here in Central Ohio. North Market, kind of a holdover from the 1800s when there was also East, West, and a Central Market in Columbus, North Market Bridge Park in Dublin, Bud Dairy in Italian Village, Bubbly Hall in New Albany, and Trolley District East Market, which is what we're gonna focus on today. East Market is a perfect place to answer the question, why are there so many food halls? It sits on a three acre site where the buildings were originally constructed between 1882 and 1920, and they were where the electric trolley system, once known as the Columbus Electric Car Barn, were housed. The district went from looking like this to this. It's a 30,000 square foot space divided up into 20 plus food and market stalls with a dozen or so tenants, seating, and an event space on the second floor. The plans for the $25 million redevelopment began in 2014 for this food hall with two bars. On the near east side of town, sandwiched between Old Town East and the Franklin Park Conservatory and Botanical Gardens, poorer, predominantly black neighborhoods. And before I get all negative, I just wanna say that I actually like the fact that in East Market and Bud Dairy, whom I mentioned a minute ago, which used to be just that, an abandoned dairy for decades, convert old warehouses, factories, and vacant lots into usable spaces, okay? Now, let's complain. When developer Brad DeHaze of Connect Realty was seeking funding for this project and asking for tax credits, he pledged to build multifamily housing in this poor, predominantly black community. He offered 100 gigs of broadband service to East High School to reserve a market stall for a student-run business while also providing a market cooler and free meeting space to schools, adding two free laptop stations for student use. The Hayes and Connect also plan to provide high-speed wireless internet service on site, making it free for public use, as long as East Market doesn't have to pay its fair share in taxes. More on this later. So. The two bars on the property opened in December of 2021. The marketplace opened in the spring of 2022. And by that next February, East Market was filing a complaint against the Pit Barbecue for allegedly breaching their contract, claiming it vacated a two year lease early and failed to pay any of the arrangements aligned in that agreement. By August, 2023, Trolley East Market alleged that the butcher and grocer owed them more than $20,000 in rent. The butcher and grocer, a locally sourced meat, cheese, and grocery vendor, said that the terms of its lease dictated one day of free rent for each day that the market was delayed in opening, a total of 236 days of free rent worth 
$91,000. The Butcher and Grocer closed its East Market location. Counterclaims and lawsuits followed per NBC4. But here was Brad DeHaze and Tony Tanner, owner of The Butcher and Grocer, discussing how they're both East Siders to the local news, with DeHaze acknowledging that the surrounding area is a food desert because he knows there's one grocery store, a Kroger, for the entire Near East Side. As of the 2010 census, there were 20,000 plus residents living in those two zip codes. These contain neighborhoods that I mentioned last week, like Bronzeville and Hanford Village. Anyways, according to Columbus Monthly and the five anonymous East Market vendors who were willing to talk to the publication, within 16 months of serving the community, there was, quote, growing tensions between vendors and market management and maintenance issues that range from a mouse infestation to ongoing problems with the building's HVAC system, which vendors say can leave the facility uncomfortably hot for workers, visitors, and produce. Furthermore, in a text message shared with journalists referring to the size of the sausages that he wanted to order from an East Market vendor, DeHaye said, yeah, I'm thinking somewhere between Asian and American porn length. So there's that. With that said, as I alluded to earlier, we need to talk about tax abatement. An abatement is a tax break offered by a state or municipality on certain types of real estate or business opportunities. Seems like East Market got one or some as part of the downtown redevelopment district. The thing about that is East Market isn't downtown. Nowhere near. Here's what Columbus native, poet, activist, librarian, Academy Award winner and scarf aficionado Scott Woods had to say about this. In the case of the trolley barn, the city is taxing the development $80,000 a year towards schools for the first 15 years, but taking 70% of that money and funneling it back through a committee that gets to decide how to reinvest the $56,000 they just snatched. So schools end up with $24,000 per year from a development that will generate millions of dollars. You can't hire a first year teacher with that kind of money. That in the midst of Columbus City school teachers striking due to salary demands and dilapidated schools. I would know I was there. East Market was and is bound to make a lot of money serving expensive food that local residents won't be able to afford. For example, Just Chicken is, as they describe themselves, where chicken tenders are treated with the best care and quality ingredients. They sell a Just Tenders meal, which is Four crispy chicken tenders, fresh cut fries, slaw, garlic ball, drink, and sauce for $14.99. A kid's meal is $6.99, so, you know. Can I get a kid's meal? I don't see no kids. Buck City Sammy's refers to itself as a modern take on a classic delicatessen. They make premium sandwiches, and there's one called the Karen that's going to run you $17. And if I paid that much money for a sandwich, I too would ask to speak to the manager. All Sammy's come with a bag of chips, but no drink? Mmm, gotta ask for that water cup. Considering the idea that one of the bars I cataloged a few minutes ago is a speakeasy, and then Columbus Brewing Company is occupying one of the five buildings in the district while, and well, you may have to be from or live in Columbus in order to understand what I'm about to say, but there's a local cantina that just moved into another one of the buildings on the Near East Side. You know what? To help some of y'all out around the country and around the world, think of your favorite local taco chain. Not the good one, the one that doesn't season its food. Take that, drop it in the middle of the blackest neighborhood that your white friends may be afraid to go to, but Black people claim they're from in order to make themselves seem tougher than they actually are. It's that. I don't want people to waste their money. Where's John Matteries when you need him? Brad DeHaze, Connect Realty and East Market. Aubrey Stevens, East Market Director of Operations and Leasing. Thus far, two years in, have overpromised and underdelivered. I shouldn't even have to ask, who is this for? And who's eating at East Market? Why are there so many food halls? There's a lot of theatrics around it. People actually enjoy the experience, not just of going to consume food, but to spectate it, to go and watch it being made. 
He says millennials are driving the trend. They will tell you that they're willing to spend far more of their disposable income on experiences than actual hard goods. Millennials, they're for us. We eat at East Market. We're why there's so many food halls. They make money off of us not wanting to cook and with groceries being too expensive, we might as well let a dude who looks like the fifth member of a barbershop quartet and his business partner, the manifestation of an IPA, whatever that is, make us cheeseburger sushi. We, who claim to be middle class but don't have capital and are an accident away from being poor. We, who were wrongfully blamed for the death of malls and diamonds and napkins. Food halls are us. NFTs are too, maybe. Don't get me wrong, food halls are nice. So nice that the racist husband slash dad of a family of four who doesn't see how diversity is America's strength somehow doesn't apply that when he's simultaneously ordering lobster, Korean food, chicken and waffles, and tacos all at once. I mean, East Market is charming and food halls in general provide a dope opportunity for chefs, cooks, bakers, florists, and bartenders, independently owned businesses who may need more space than a food truck but don't want to deal with renting a freestanding building. They can lease or license their creations. And charging so much money for what they create is a way to perhaps get them to their very own restaurant or pay themselves and their staff a living wage, while attracting a higher-end clientele who has more disposable income, buying power, and are more likely to invite others for board meetings or some nonsense. And don't get me wrong, shop local, support small businesses, go to your local food hall, eat at East Market. Buck City Sammy's has an all-day breakfast sandwich for $10. It's only served on Saturday and Sunday, but still. And Butcher and Grocer has a location in Grandview. I'm still not convinced that East Market is for that local neighborhood. However, they do have lunch specials and community events. If they can invest in, revitalize, and revamp Old Town East like they did with a trolley barn while not pricing out the residents, I'm all for it. I don't trust it, but we need that. Now, excuse me, your favorite elder millennial is trying to find a hot cake booth. We gonna be all right. Thank you to my friends Jason and Seth for not only encouraging me to do this video, but sending me an article about some of the finer details and telling me about their experiences with East Market, but also for being two dudes who look exactly like the target demographic for food halls. To the left, to the right, to the left, to the right.